No religious text is more strongly in support of property rights than the Bible. The right of an individual to own property fully and completely is central to Scripture. I'm Michael Quinn Sullivan with a reflection on life and liberty. Private property rights are so intrinsic to Scripture, you find them twice in the Ten Commandments. The first you probably know, the Seventh Commandment, you shall not steal. To understand the full significance of the Ten Commandments, it's helpful to think of their obverse. For example, the Fifth Amendment, you shall not kill. Easy, right? Just don't murder anyone. But because the law of God is about something more than the letter of the law, but also its spirit, we understand that the fifth commandment also speaks to the way we protect, honor, and celebrate life. It's not enough that I don't kill someone. I need to be actively engaged in helping those in need. When Scripture tells us that God has commanded that we shouldn't steal, that implies something deeper about the nature of property and human rights. By virtue of being told not to steal, we're also being told that people have a right to own things. This goes further in the tenth commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servants or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Those last three words, is your neighbor's. It's important to understand what is meant to covet a thing. It's to want something so much that one will do something unethical or illegal to get it. Whether it's a house, spouse, employee, or pet, it's very clear this is not a warning against aspiring to be better, though. Quite the opposite. This is a warning, along with the injunction against outright theft in the Seventh Commandment, to not let ourselves scheme to take away that which belongs, again, ownership, to someone else. In our alleged capitalistic system, in our republic, where we pay high lip service to the principles of free markets, we've allowed a very unscriptural view towards property to arise. In Texas, we do not own our own homes or land. They all belong to the state. You disagree? Try not paying your annual rent payment to the school district, city, county, hospital district, and community college and see how long you get to remain on their land and in their home. I said rent. I meant property taxes. But it's the same difference. Our property tax system is based on coveting what our neighbor possesses and wanting it so badly, we scheme to punish him for having it. We dress up, of course. It's about the children, making sure they have nice things. <laughs> Hogwash. Consider the biennial debate in the Texas legislature. It's not about allowing you to own your property, but haggling over ways to make taxpayers think the politicians are reducing the rent payment to government for that which should rightfully belong to the individual. Confused? You should be. While some politicians campaign for office declaring themselves a friend to the notion of finding a way toward eliminating Texas' immoral property taxes, once in office, they have a funny way of not trotting down any path leading in that direction. Ultimately, we must understand property ownership. If liberty is to live on these shores, we must look to God's word about how to allow and protect the full obligations and rights of property ownership. We must end the practice of taxing property so people can enjoy the rights granted to them by God. If you listen to today's podcast on Google, Apple, or Spotify, do me a favor, rate it and leave a review. The Reflections podcast is one of many presented by Texas Scorecard. This edition was produced by Nick Shepard in the 1836 studios, and I'm Michael Quinn Sullivan. Thanks for listening.